Health officials in China say around 14% of patients who had the coronavirus but recovered have tested positive again. The same phenomenon has been reported in Japan, where a woman in her 40s tested positive for a second time after being released from hospital. Officials in both countries have said they are still learning about this new virus. In China, the number of infected continues to rise. We've got 433 new cases reported on Wednesday. All but 24 of those are in Hubei, where it all began. The numbers in South Korea continually bouncing up too. The total number of cases has now reached more than 1,700, as you can see. And in the past hour, Iran has said the numbers of deaths from coronavirus stands at 19, with 139 confirmed cases. Well, President Trump has said the U.S. will do whatever is necessary to combat the spread of coronavirus and insisted the country is ready for anything. Whatever happens, we're totally prepared. We have the best people in the world. Uh, you see that from the study. Uh, we have the best prepared people, the best people in the world. Uh, Congress is willing to give us much more than we're even asking for. That's nice for a change. Uh, but we are uh, totally ready, willing, and able. It's a term that we use. It's ready, willing, and able. We have, we have, uh, it's going to be very well under control. Now, it may get bigger, it may get a little bigger, it may not get bigger at all. We'll see what happens. But regardless of what happens, we're totally prepared. We have this story covered from all over the globe with correspondents in a place right around the world. Elise Preston from CBS News joins us from New York. Jenny Hill, the BBC's Jenny Hill in Tokyo and in Dubai, our correspondent Samir Hashmi. Elise, if we can start with you, is it clear then what the Trump administration's policy at, is at the moment around coronavirus? Because it's been slightly mixed messages from the president. Well, Lucy, as you heard from President Trump, he is trying to ease fears and urge calm here in the U.S. He's repeatedly said that the U.S. has the best people to get a handle on a potential spread right here. And just yesterday, Mr. Trump's, Mr. Trump tapped Vice President Mike Pence to head the administration's response. Plans, Elise, are already in place. What preparations have been made so far? is hoping to get a vaccine developed quickly. Mr. Pence says he, he has been directed to take all necessary steps to get the virus under control and help keep Americans healthy. It looks like we'll hear more details, specific details about how that will get done as time goes on. Elise, thanks for that. Jenny in Tokyo, huge concern today, it seems, that people are testing positive twice now for the coronavirus. Well, this is one case, yes, we learned about this today, a woman in her 40s who was treated and discharged from holiday at the very beginning of February, only now to test positive again. So, yes, that's raising huge concerns here, as is the fact that the number of infections is growing. There are clusters all over the country. And actually, just before I came on air, we learned that another 13 people have tested positive in the northern region of Hokkaido, two of them children under the age of 10. It's a huge concern for the Japanese authorities because in five months' time, this country is due to host the 2020 Olympics. Now, the authorities here are saying they're going to continue with their preparations. It's far too early to do anything about that, to consider cancellation or postponement. Um, but we also have heard today from Tokyo's Olympics organizing committee, the chief executive, who says um, that the torch relay, which is due to start in just a matter of weeks' time, here. It's going to travel all over the country, may have to be downsized. And Samia, to you, uh, Saudi Arabia welcomes thousands of foreign pilgrims every year. What is the advice now from the Saudi government? Well, uh, that's right, Lucy. Uh, in fact, millions of uh, pilgrims who visit Saudi Arabia for, you know, they go to Makkah and Medina, the two holy uh, cities for the Islamic, for the Muslim world. Now, uh, what the Saudis have decided is that no foreign pilgrims will be allowed with immediate effect. Uh, in fact, even their own citizens that are uh, in the country, they've advised them not to travel to the countries which are affected by the coronavirus. Interestingly, this comes at a time when we are just less than two months away from the holy month of Ramadan. Now, this is the period when uh, it's the second busiest season when pilgrims visit Saudi Arabia before the Hajj pilgrimage, which takes place in July. Uh, the Saudi authorities don't want to take any chances, Lucy, because what they've seen happen in Iran a week ago 
where they certainly saw a surge in the number of cases and then that spread to neighboring countries like Oman, Kuwait and Bahrain and all of those cases in these three countries are related to pilgrims who had visited Iran and that's why the Saudis authorities don't want to take any risks considering that they will be expecting thousands of people to visit uh, Makkah and Medina over the next couple of months. And Samir, what is the potential economic impact of this? Well, if you look at the region, uh, still no t tangible data to say how much has been the impact, but there are signs of it. So if you talk about countries like the UAE or Dubai, where I'm right now, it's, it attracts a lot of tourists during the season, including uh, one million Chinese every year. So we have seen a fall in that. Uh, we're waiting for official data to come out. Oil is the other one. This region is one of the biggest producers of oil. The Saudis are the biggest supplier of oil to China, and they've already seen demand going down. So that's going to have an impact on their economy, or at least put pressure on their economy. And this also comes at a time when the Saudis are trying to give a push to tourism. They have liberalized their visa rules to attract more tourists. Uh, but now with this uh, suspension coming in, we will see a downfall in the number of tourists visiting not only Saudi Arabia, but even the region in general because people are just being cautious. And Jenny, back to you. You have some breaking news to bring us. Yeah, we've just learned um, in the last few minutes or so that the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is calling for the closure of all Japan's public schools temporarily as of Monday. That perhaps gives you an indication of the levels of concern here in Japan as the number of new cases continues to rise. Jenny, tell us more about the picture in South Korea. Well, South Korea, of course, has been the focus of huge alarm because numbers there have been soaring. In the last week, it's gone from a dozen or so, a few dozen cases, up to now more than 1,700. Many of those cases have been linked to a religious sect, and the authorities are now trying to test every member of that church group, some 200,000 of them, but huge concerns about whether the outbreak there can be uh, contained. And over the border in North Korea, the authorities are saying that they're going to try and delay the start of the new school term in an attempt to halt the, uh, the contagion. So big concerns around this region. And we know that in China, the original epicenter of the outbreak, that, the, that people are still dying, people are still being infected, but that overall the World Health Organization says the picture generally is improving. That is certainly not the case elsewhere in the region. Jenny, great to have you. Thanks for that update from Tokyo and Samir in Dubai. Thank you very much too. Well, a short time ago in Iran, a senior politician confirmed he has tested positive for coronavirus. He says he's placed himself in quarantine. And these are pictures from neighboring Iraq. We've just got these in. Uh, they have announced in Baghdad the first confirmed case of the virus in the capital, bringing the total number of infections in the country to six. Uh, the health ministry is saying the case was a young man who had recently returned from Iran. But uh, Iraq very much in lockdown as well. Uh, public meetings have been banned in Iraq and uh, schools, cinemas, mosques as well. Uh, people are being told to stay away. So Iraq, Baghdad particularly, very much in lockdown at the moment too.